Hey folks, the Rio Can posted a net income earnings for 2022, this Q1 period of a whopping $160 million versus 2021 for the Q1 period of only $106 million on a funds from operation per share basis. That was $0.42 cents versus $0.33 cents for the same time last year. But why then is the Rio Can stock crashing? I mean, it's down 20% from its recent highs this year, guys. Still outperforming the S&P 500, only being now down 9%. 0.62% with a whopping starting yield again of almost 5%. Well, we're going to be talking about why this REIT is crashing, what I personally think about it. And if that is a conversation you can appreciate, hit that like button, folks, because Rio Cannon is a huge position, was the largest single stock holding in my portfolio, probably up till this week. I'd have to run some math, but we've got 599 shares in my managed account, currently worth about $12,429. This is my best purchase shares. I sold this down to repurchase some shares in my tax free savings account, which I recently bought within this year. So we can see that I'm getting hit on this one down about 15.91% on 337 shares currently worth about $6,989. Now this isn't just a real camp problem here, folks. If we go into any single REIT, all the major REITs in Canada, I'll show you a few here, like the Canadian apartment properties REIT, the largest Canadian, uh, I think pure play REIT in residential. This thing is down massively. I mean, same, similar to real can here, but down a little worse, 25.63% on the year. We're taking a look at Smart Centers, another one that's just getting clobbered here in tandem with Rio Can, only down about 15.49% and down 11% on the year. I mean, Dream Industrial, guys, these industrial REITs were a gem for growth over the last, you know, couple years during the pandemic. This one just getting absolutely hammered here, also down about 22%. Allied Properties, uh, it recently peaked this year and now it's pulling down 22%. Granite Real Estate, uh, another again, industrial REIT down 19.47%. And if we just take a look at the broader Canadian uh, real estate fund from Vanguard on the, uh, the the capped REIT index, I mean, it's down 19.15%. So whether you own these REITs individually or you own them through an ETF, you're experiencing roughly the same kind of pain, probably largely different from an interest raising environment. A lot of fear surrounded in the real estate market here in Canada that we're going into a cooling period. So let's talk about the earnings coming out of Rio Can first and foremost, and the things that I didn't particularly like. Now, if we go into the rental revenue. This is what I primarily pay most attention to. We can actually see that from Rio Can's proponented shares, they're looking at about $279 million for uh, Q1 of this year. But if we go back to the same time last year, guys, they did $279 million, but about, I don't know, maybe about $500,000 more. So their actual rental revenue hasn't really adjusted to any degree. Most of their new income is coming from the sales of properties and development. And you can take that both ways. I think it's a good thing personally, but I'd also like to see the rental revenue continuing to climb because that's kind of baking in that underlying fundamental residual income, right? So let's get into this because from an occupancy standpoint, guys, this is great. We're trending back in the right direction from the lows of the pandemic. They hit a low from Q4 of 2020 when they were only collecting about 95% of those rents, 94 and 95. And now we're sitting at around 97, which is just absolutely wonderful. So it's trending in the right direction at this point. We're clearly turning around from the pandemic lows and fears of obviously, you know, these mall rates getting absolutely clear. Clobbered. And from a uh, from an income standpoint, for an average rent on a per square footage basis, guys, this continues to trend in the right direction as well. I mean, even through the pandemic, they still managed to get this to rise. Right now, the average square footage for Q1 of 2022 on a rental basis is $20.23, but the average rent for new leases are paying $31.40 per square foot. So if that continues to remain going into the future projects, we should see this number continue to climb on an average basis over their entire portfolio. And continuing to look at the development pipeline, because this is where I think the future revenue is really going to be coming from. I mean, they got 42.6 million square feet in development. I mean, that's insane. 42 million square feet is just unbelievable with active pre-development sitting at 30, uh, 3.2 million square feet, the shovel ready 2.5 million square feet and underway 2.2 million square feet. So let's talk about some of the development here because the well is their primary property. In my opinion, it is a gem. It's walking distance from the uh, Toronto uh, or yeah, right downtown Toronto front street, uh, the train station. Uh, it's a beautiful property, probably one of the most premier sites in Toronto. And currently there it's worth, it's 1.2 million square feet, which is insane, right? And it's, 90% leases, distinctive office space, housing, active primary knowledge-based workers. So from the office standpoint, mostly leased, right? 320 square feet of forward-thinking retail providing meaningful experience and everyday needs. That's 79% leased. And then they're going to have 1.5 million square feet of a residential consisting of 1,700 condominiums.
condominiums and purpose-built rental suites, including 592 units of residential uh, rental tower currently under construction, right? So this is like the future of what Toronto's moving toward. And Rio Can is helping front that by building these cities in the sky where you have a mixed-use building of residential up top with a little bit of office and then mall space below. So you can pretty much just live your entire life without pretty much leaving the condo itself. And we can scroll through and take a look at some of their other premier properties. I mean, this one's another beautiful one currently under uh, currently 227,000 square feet uh, in income producing retail in the heart of Toronto's entertainment district. Uh, this thing is going to be great. I mean, there's so many here. I mean, look at this one in Vaughn. Uh, if we just scroll through, it's just fun kind of looking at the pictures as we break it down. But further and more intriguing to me, if we go down here, when we take a look at some more of the residential, um, it's really incredible to think a lot of these units aren't coming on till 2022, this sometime this year to 2025. And even the projects pushing out to 2025 are 96 percent pre-sold. Uh, the 11 uh, Yorkville property is in one of the most expensive areas in Toronto, and it's already, guys, 99% pre-sold, 587 units, which isn't even coming online till 2024, 2025 timeframe. So all of their future forward-looking condominium sales are unbelievable. Like, look at these projects here that aren't coming online till 2026, 97% pre-sold and 99% pre-sold. They're just already well in advanced, you know, baked in value here, in my opinion. And I just, the more I look through this, guys, it's it's a fairly robust re offering really stable residual income. They bought some shares back off the table, so there's less shares outstanding. They continue to do that. They bought them at a higher price. They're looking at perhaps buying some more at the lower end. I wouldn't be surprised if the dividend yield starts coming back. A lot of people disappointed we didn't get a dividend increase considering, you know, their, their payout ratio dropped to, a thing, I think, about 57% from something like 80 or 90% uh, from the last quarter, pretty much. And I think a lot of that is baked in from those sales and that extra, you know, funds from operation from just selling properties and not the rental income. But nonetheless, guys, all this is baking into is more fundamental base on why Rio Can is a really good value play here if you're looking for a good value for basically income. I mean, that's what REITs are for, right? Like just generating passive income while you sleep. And I don't really care, to be honest, too much about, say, obviously you know, the dividend going up because if I want dividend growth, I don't think REITs offer like real consistent, insane dividend growth. You're gonna get that from companies like McDonald's, Pepsi, perhaps Johnson & Johnson, some of those more consumer uh, staple based companies. So I'm not really running here for that aspect of it. I'm looking for cash flow today that is reinvestable so that's the whole point, right? Like most people keep thinking that, you know, because it's a high yield that it should just keep increasing. But the point is to get a high yield today so I can constantly have reinvestable cash flow that will continue to grow yields at a perpetuated rate. Because it's nice getting compounded dividend growth. But if you're starting with a yield off, say, J&J, Pepsi, McDonald's, where it's closer to 2%, you're not really getting as much upfrontable reinvestable cash flow, right? So it's kind of a balancing act for you, the dividend investors out there. But I passed the question off to you at this point. I'd love to know what you guys think about this real can earnings, the fact that REITs are crashing in general and just how you generally feel about it. But on that note, stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.